let's set up the workspace for fabric in 193. All right, so here we are again in the very beginning. This 119.3 series is gonna be a little bit shorter. We're just going to cover a few topics, but regardless of this, let's start first of all by setting everything up. So if you've not modded before, if you've not programmed before, that's totally fine. We're just gonna go through a few steps. I'll also say a few comments along the way. And from there, we will then continue. So the first thing you're going to need is a JDK. That is a Java development kit. I will once again, of course, link everything that I mentioned here and all of the downloads. What you wanna get is the JDK 7. That's incredibly important. Of course, you can then choose your operating system. So for me, it is going to be Windows. So I'm just going to download the MSI right here. The MSI in this case, you can just click on this once it's downloaded and then install this like any other program onto your PC. There's one interesting thing that we want to do. So let's just see what happens when I actually open this. So after you open this and click next, what I highly recommend is you do the following right here. So you put the set ho Java home variable will be installed on your local hard drive. That actually is a very sensible thing that just sets a variable which then when you actually program in Java basically is able to find your Java installation easier so this is one of the things that I do highly recommend doing and then just next and install and then there you go. Once you have installed Java, I also want to mention that if you have no Java experience whatsoever, I do highly recommend getting a little bit of Java knowledge beforehand. For that, I can highly recommend my Java introduction for Minecraft modding. I will also link this in the description below. So if you have absolutely no experience in Java or programming, I really, really recommend trying to get a little bit of foundation here and then maybe work through one or two episodes or topics here in the modding space, go back to the Java introduction and sort of let that motivation fuel you, right? So basically let the Minecraft modding fuel your motivation to actually learn Java because you will get way, way, way further if you know Java instead of if you just go in blind. The next thing we're going to need is an IDE or integrated development environment. We are going to choose IntelliJ IDEA. Now you can also use VS Code or Eclipse or any other type of IDE. I will choose IntelliJ IDEA because it's the one that I've been working with for forever now and basically. And if you are choosing a different one, then you just have to figure out some stuff on your own because things are definitely going to be different. So this is why I highly recommend it. When you choose the community version on the right right here, this is extremely important. This is free. Don't choose the ultimate version because that only is a free 30 day trial. You want to choose the free version, the community one, just download it. And once again, once that is downloaded, you can simply ex you can simply install this program onto your PC like any other program. Once you have it installed, we're actually not going to open it just yet. Or if you have it open, that's totally fine. But we need one more thing, and that is the fabric installation. Luckily, there is a new template generator right here for fabric, which is very, very useful. Because what we can do is we can choose a mod name, a package name, the Minecraft version, and then just download a zip file, which has everything already included for us, which is extremely, extremely amazing. So what I'm going to do is the name is going to be tutorial mod. I'm going to click custom ID just because I want my ID to be one long name instead of a dash in between. Then here my package name, you can see this is a new unique package name. You can just choose name.mod ID. So if your name is, for example, John, you could just say john.tutorialmod or, you know, if you have an online name, you can use that as well. I'm going to choose net.countenjo.tutorialmod. Once again, I highly recommend use your own name. Don't use someone else's name. It's kind of weird, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, though, this is what you want to do. And then down here, I personally don't want this to split up the client and the common sources, but I do, however, want the data generation. This is how I filled this out. Then you just click download as template and then you can actually continue with using this. Right, so I already prepared a folder right here. So I have the zip file right here. I'm going to extract this into tutorial mod template 119.3 and you can see all of these things are inside of here. That's very good indeed. Now, personally rename this to fabric tutorial 1.19.3, there you go. We can delete the zip file and then we can go into this folder and actually delete both the license as well as the .github folder. Both of those are not necessary. So just to quickly explain, the license is actually the license for the template. The license of the template should be under CC0 and usually that is not the license that you want for your mod. Usually you want maybe like a general lesser license or M MIT or something similar. So we're going to delete the license file and then also the .github just has a workflow that basically looks at, hey, does this mod actually like build properly? Now in this case, we actually don't want it. We don't need it necessarily. So that's why we also want to delete that. Now this is your mod project. Now if you open IntelliJ for the first time, it's probably not going to look exactly like this. However, what you will have is 
three buttons, the new project button, the open button, and the get from VCS button. You want to click the open button, and then right inside of here, you want to put in the exact location where you have saved your project folder. And you want to choose the project folder that contains all of these files. So you don't want to choose the source folder or something like that. You want to choose the actual folder where all of this is contained in. You're going to say OK, and then you say trust. And then it's going to open a new window right here. It's going to immediately start doing stuff in the background. You can see it's synchronizing. And this might be the case that this is going to throw an error. Absolutely no worries. Just wait until this has gone through. And then we're going to continue. So you can see we already have the error right here. And it says you are using an outdated version of Java 8. Java 17 or higher is required. This is absolutely no worries. What are you going to do if you have this error, which is very common if you have a different Java version installed other than only 17. You want to go to File, Project Structure, and then just making sure that both the SDK right here is set to 17, as well as the level, the language level is set to SDK default. Then hit Apply, OK. And you can see at the top right corner, we have this little elephant with a reload button. If you don't have this, you can go to Gradle and then hit just hit this button. And this will do the same thing. It's going to rebuild everything. And now it should go through without any errors. And then we will just see. So once again, we're just going to wait until this has gone through, hopefully with a build successful. And then we can take a look at all of those files and do a few things there. All right. So we have a build successful in 50 seconds. This might take a little bit longer for you. I have seen people where it took like, I don't know, like a good like 20 minutes or something. This highly depends on your internet speed and the speed of your PC. So just be patient and let this run through. Once this is done and you have a build successful, we can minimize this and we can actually take a look at the folders. So first of all, expand the source folder and then the Java folder. Now, this is roughly what you should see if you're using IntelliJ for the first time. There's a class right here and it's all sort of net Kalpenjo tutorial mod, net Kalpenjo tutorial mod mixin. So it should look like this. Now, I actually don't have this. This is the default view. However, I recommend going to the show options over here, going to tree appearance and then making sure that both hide empty middle packages as well as flatten packages is turned off because this is usually how I want my thing to set up and this is how I want this to look. Also make sure that you're in project view over here. If you're in a different type of view, then it might also look different. But before we go in and do all sorts of renaming, we want to actually open the terminal first of all, making sure that we are in the correct location, right? This is the correct location, Fabric Tutorial 1.19.3. This is exactly right. And we want to put in dot slash gradle w gen sources and then hit enter. This is going to download and generate the source files from Minecraft. This is basically needed so you can go into the source files from Minecraft and actually take a look at how certain things are done. For example, you want to implement a new creeper. Well, just look at the creeper class. How is that done? We'll just go in there, look at this. You can see all of the code and that is then available to you. So this once again might take a little while because it is, you know, generating stuff. It's downloading stuff. It's doing many things in the background. Just be patient, let this run through. And after this is done, we can then proceed. All right, here we go. Build successful in one minute, 33 seconds. That is great. And now we can proceed in doing things. So first of all, let's double click the example mod method right here. And you can see we find ourselves in a class. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all, rename this. Now renaming this is very important that you do this correctly. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. You want to click on this class and you don't want to just type in and rename it because this is not good. What you want to do is you want to click on the name, press shift F6 and then rename it. So then we can type in tutorial mod and you can see on the left, it actually changes the name of the file as well, because this right here is the name of the file, while this is the name of the class. Those are, in theory, two different things, and they can differ. However, it is best practice to have them be the same name. So we're going to do the same thing for the mod generator. We're not going to use generators right now, but they will be used in a little bit. So you can rename this, and then we can say this is also the tutorial mod data generator. Absolutely no worries. For the mixin, we're just going to keep the name example mixin. That's totally fine. Let's just close this. We're going to close this and we want to stay in the tutorial mod class. So I'm just going to delete this comment over here. It's not necessary, but what is necessary is a new field right here. And that is going to be a static, a public static final string called mod underscore ID. And that is equal to a string tutorial mod because this is our mod ID. That's extremely important. This mod ID, we will run into this uh, many a times throughout modding Minecraft. And this is basically a unique identifier for your mod. What's also incredibly important is that it cannot contain spaces or special characters, only dashes and underscores, normal lowercase characters and numbers. That's extremely important. 
So please keep that in mind. Or right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the resources folder. Now in the assets folder, we already have an icon PNG. Now this is just, you know, an, an, a placeholder icon. That's totally fine. We also have two JSON files right here, the fabric mod JSON, as well as the tutorial mod mix in JSON. Let's open the fabric mod JSON first of all. And you can see it already filled a few things out for us. The, the mod ID over here, tutorial mod, great. The name tutorial mod, also great. Then we have a description. You can fill this out however you want. The author, well, the author, it's me, of course. And then you can see a contact over here. So you can fill out if you have a homepage, if you have sources for this, right? If you have a GitHub repository, you can all link this here. The license, you can see before it was CC 0.1.0. Now in my case, it's actually going to be MIT license. That's totally fine. And then a few other things. So the environment basically just says, hey, we're both client and server. Absolutely no worries. And then here we can see there's entry points. There's a main entry point, which actually points to the example mod class. And this is one thing that we definitely have to change. This is extremely important because now our class is no longer called example mod. It is now called tutorial mod. So we want to change this to tutorial mod. And then same thing goes here for the data gen. We want to change this to Mod. Right, the mixin is totally fine. This refers to the mixin JSON right here. But the names are all changed already, so that is totally fine. Now, there's one more thing that we want to add ourselves, and that is in the tutorial mod package, we want to right click new Java class, and this we're going to call tutorial mod client, and we're going to hit enter. Right, we want this to implement the client mod initializer. You can see it suggests this to us, and then we're going to hit the enter button. We can then hover over this, implement methods going to choose the on initialize method, hit OK, and then this should be fine. And now we need to reference this in the fabric mod JSON file. Very important indeed. So we're going to just add a new line here. We're going to write in a string client, colon, open bracket, and then inside of here, we want to put in the exact location once again. So net tutorial mod client. Making sure that this is written exactly correctly, Casing, all of this has to be exact. Once that is the case, we're actually already properly set up. One thing I still want to show you is the gradle.properties file. So you can see this is the mod version. So there's a few things in here. This is our current Minecraft version, the current yarn mappings and the loader version. And this is the fabric version this mod is currently using. So do keep this in mind as well. Here are some things that you can change or you ha will have to change, you know, if a different version comes out, things like that. And then interesting enough, the build.gradle file, we can simply ignore for the time being. This is used to add dependencies and different mods as well. So you can see you can add different mods, right? In this case, we have the fabric API, of course, but you can also add other mods, right? So if you were to build a plugin for a different mod, then this would be added here, for example. Now, before we start, I quickly want to draw your attention to the external libraries right here, because if we expand this, first of all, you can see, oh my lord, that there's a lot of stuff in here. Absolutely no worries. The only thing we want to look at is net Minecraft, Minecraft project, merge name, yada, 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 yada. All of this craziness, right? Because if we expand this, number one, there's an assets folder in here, and this contains all of the assets from Minecraft, right? So all of the textures are in here, all of this. Very important resource indeed. And then also under net, Right under net Minecraft, you can see it contains all of the different source files. So this is all of the code from Minecraft. So for example, an item, right, the armor item, we can double click on this. Now what you will find is you'll probably have this blue note over here. What you can do is you can then click on choose sources. If you have gone and done the gen sources one, right, dot slash gradle w gen sources, then you should have the merged name sources here. You're going to click OK, and then it's going to reload this. And then now this should be the actual code that is used for Minecraft. If there are errors in here, they can of course be ignored because in this case, sometimes things are just weird. And also, of course, you can't change anything in here anyway, because this code is already done, right? This is already written. You can only add code, but you can't just like delete code from the actual source files. That would be very strange indeed. Right, but now we can start Minecraft for the first time. How do we do this? Well, we want to go to the Gradle window right here on the right, and then we want to expand this, expand tasks, expand fabric, and then double click the run client right here. We can then we can then close this again. And then we just have to wait until Minecraft starts. This shouldn't take too long. It's going to do a few things. And then at some point, the, the Minecraft window should open. This error right here is absolutely normal. And it, there's no, no concern about this at all. This is just because we're not locked into Minecraft, but that is absolutely normal. And you can actually see Minecraft still starts completely normally. There we go. The Minecraft menu is right here. We can change the options. Let's just turn off the music. There you go. And that is it. So everything works. We're in fabric modded. 
it's all exactly how we want it. Right, and with this, we have set up the fabric workspace for 119.3. Now I still want to show you how you can set up a GitHub repository for all of this, because this might be interesting for you if you have ever have an issue and something and you want to share this with someone, having a GitHub repository can be quite important. So to set this up, what you want to do is you first of all need a GitHub account. Now, I of course already have a GitHub account. However, you can just make one. I highly recommend it. It's an incredibly reputable site. It is incredibly useful and it's just going to help you out in the future. Because having a GitHub repository is not only to share your code, it is also for version control. And that means that if you change something and then you upload it to GitHub, and then you actually realize, oh no, I broke my mod completely, you can always revert to a earlier version. Right, to upload your things to GitHub, you want to go to the VCS option over here, and you want to say share project on GitHub. Now, I want to call this the fabric-tutorial-1193. For the time being, I'm going to make this private. If you ever want to share this with people, you of course should not make this private. And then you can see share by, well, we don't have any account to share with, so we actually have to add an account right here. We can just say login via GitHub, now, it's going to open your browser. If you are then logged into GitHub in your browser, you can just click authorizing GitHub and you can see you've been successfully authorized. Absolutely great. And if we then continue here, you can see github.com slash So this is absolutely great. We then click share. It then is going to create this GitHub repository and then it says add files for initial commit. We want to hit add. The files are no longer read. If they are read, this means that you have not added them to your GitHub repository. And you can see at the bottom right, successfully shared your project on GitHub. So if I click on this, you can actually see, there we go, our GitHub repository has been made. If we then change something, so for example, we add a very important comment, you can see that the file all of a sudden is blue. This means that changes have been detected in this file. To then add those changes to your GitHub repository, you want to go to commit, you want to check all of the changes, you want to say added a very important comment, right? So you basically want to express what has changed, when I hit commit, now it's very important. Now this has been committed. If we go back to the project, it is no longer blue. However, inside of GitHub, this has not yet been added. So this is still the same thing. You can still still initial commit about a minute ago because we actually have to push this. At the top right corner, you can see a arrow that arrow that points to the top right, and that is called push. If we click on this, you can see oh, added a very important comment. All of the changes that you did for this are then going to be pushed towards GitHub. So committing it is basically saving it on your machine and then pushing it is actually publishing it to GitHub and the online space. So we're going to push this and then after this is done, you can see push one commit to origin master. If we then go back to GitHub and reload this, you can then see added a very important comment and it was pushed just now. The VCS option has changed to the Git option and that should be totally fine. That is pretty much all you're going to need. Also, of course, during this, you're going to have access to the GitHub repository of this. So when I write code, it is always going to be referenced in the description below as a GitHub repository. So no worries at all. And with that, we have set everything up that we want to set up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. So yeah.